Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, hopefully everyone had a, a chance to watch that wonderful presentation um, that we just had eye-opening in lots of ways, uh, just by narrowing in a little bit more on, on, on privilege. And I just thought it was a, a wonderful presentation. Um, so my name is Chad Truxell. I'm the Executive Director of the Marine Discovery Center in East Coast of Florida. I'm also an Inca board member and proud to serve in both of those capacities. Um, I signed up for uh, this workshop because we are uh, in the middle of implementation of a uh, CRM um, database program. And so I'm really excited to uh, learn uh, from this group. So uh, those of you who if this is your first time at an Inca Summit, we welcome you. If you are here and a veteran, we welcome you. Um, Inca is a wonderful resource, and I think uh, by the end of your journey this week, you will understand why if you're not too familiar with us. Um, so with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our presenters, and then we're going to get started. So. We have a nice, uh, diverse group. We have three presenters today. They're going to share the experience uh, with us. We have Jen Kurtz, the Director of Programs from Chippewa Nature Center. And so she's going to couple her implementation of CRM using Double Knot and how it's worked for her and how to really make sure um, that her um, that the use of this software doesn't take away from that personal touch. And so I'm really curious myself, that's for sure. And then we have uh, 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 two wonderful uh, presenters representing Double Knot, who's also a sponsor here for our summit. Thank you very much for supporting our work. And they've been supporting our work uh, in the Nature Center community uh, through Inca uh, for years, at least since I've been involved for the past seven or eight years with Inca. We have Brian Feldman, business development manager, with Double, Double Knot and Chantel, one, I wanna make sure, how do I pronounce your, your last name? Onesi Chantel. Gonzalez. Thank you, Onesi Gonzalez. Yes. And she is a C, senior project manager um, with Double Knot, focusing on the CRM. So I'm gonna let you all take it away and I'm looking forward to enjoying, thank you. Hi everyone, this is, uh, this is Jen. And um, I just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, we as presenters decided to have our cameras off for now so that you can see the presentation. Alyssa, would you pull up the slide about um, Chippewa Nature Center? Um, I've been here at Chippewa Nature Center since 2002. I started as a camp counselor um, and moved into my director of programs role in um, 2017. So, um, here at the Nature Center, we have about 1,500 acres, we have 19 miles of trails, we have around 25 full-time staff and another 50 part-time or seasonal staff um, who work in a variety of different departments here at the Nature Center. We're located in uh, Midland, Michigan, so um, right in the middle of the state of Michigan, and we're on the confluence of the Pine and Chippewa Rivers. So what that affords us is a huge opportunity to serve um, the population of this region and beyond. So we have a nature day camp program that started in uh, the mid 60s when the nature center started. It was the very first program we did. Uh, we started a nature preschool um, in 2007. Um, we have public programs, we have school programs, we do scout programs, we do outreach, we do things here at the nature center. So sort of the whole suite of things that you would expect from a nature center. Um, I, this program that we're talking about, um, I was involved in choosing it from the perspective of the day camp director, which was my role at the time when, when we um, selected a program. So the reason that we ended up with, uh, with Double Knot and with a, a integrated online system is uh, because we were moving into the 21st century and we were a little bit behind. Um, <laughs> you know, we, um, this picture here that you see um, was camp registration day. So. Uh, when I started as the camp director in um, 2007, we had about 500 kids attending camp. Um, we now have over 1,000 campers that we serve each summer. And um, 
coming to Nature Day Camp, getting registered for Nature Day Camp is uh, much like buying a concert ticket. Uh, and at one time you camped out in front of the venue uh, and lined up early in the morning to get your tickets. And that's exactly what was happening here at the Nature Center. So our um, families one through four showed up at 5.30 in the morning with their lawn chair and their coffee. Um, and families 500 through 700 hoped to get through on the phone um, or ended up waiting for three hours in line. Um, camp registration day was uh, six or seven staff, uh, three people on all three of our phone lines, four people taking walk-in registrations. Um, it was written on paper, uh, marked off spots were filled on a dry erase board, and then we uh, hand entered it into a database uh, which took several weeks before we could cross check and see whether we had overfilled any sessions, if we had openings in sessions. Um, it was a very cumbersome uh, staff heavy process. And so when I became the camp director um, a couple years in, I started pushing for we need to find a better way to do this. We need to serve people better. There are a lot of families that can't afford to be on the phone redialing um, for two hours. There's a lot of families that can't afford to be standing in line for three hours on registration day. Um, I mean, it's great that families love us that much and I love chatting with them and helping them make selection, selections, but wow, that's a lot to ask of people. And so um, I started pushing from the camp perspective and there were a lot of softwares out there that solved the camp problem, um, but Thankfully, at the time, our, our director level staff, our director of interpretation, our director of education really wanted to find a system that would support all of the things that we do as, as a nature center. So while there's camp docs and there's all these other things that focus on um, camp registrations, uh, we were looking for something that could manage the nature center as a whole. Um, one of those things that we wanted to look at was membership. We had a separate database for members. And so uh, if someone told us they were a member, we basically just took their word for it um, because it was super cumbersome to try and figure out if that was true or not. Um, and because it was sort of this self-contained entity. So, um, so we're looking for something that could do all of that. A few other things that we were hoping for was to be able to put a calendar of events on our webpage that wasn't crazy cumbersome to, to populate all the time. Um, we have had a printed newsletter since the beginning of time. Uh, we wanted to be able to implement an electronic one um, that we could move who was getting it um, back and forth easily so that members could get it, but other people could sign up for it. Um, and we now have a weekly e-news, uh, which is fantastic. And then just access to data. So the databases that we had, we, ha we had one scheduler um, and she manually input every single registration that came through, um, through the front office, through the phone, everything. Um, but she also, with the exception of about two other people, was the only one who could get in and mine that data back out. Um, and then man uh, membership stuff was managed by someone else. So you had to have their password to get into that database. Uh, so there were all these separate databases and people who controlled them. And so if I wanted to see membership stuff as a camp director, I had to specifically go talk to that person and have access to it. If I wanted to see who was registered for a program I was teaching, um, I had to go ask for that information. And so we really were looking for something that gave more people more access to information, but then also empowered our visitors to engage in a way that they wanted to um, because all of our registrations were limited to uh, phone calls, mail, um, or stopping by during our normal business hours. And we all know that, um, at least for me, uh, I am figuring out my family schedule at nine o'clock at night. <laughs> and so um, that's not compatible with the workday. It takes me three days to make a phone call uh, during the workday. So as we were doing this and evaluating different softwares and having different um, presentations, it became pretty clear to us that DoubleNot was able to check all of those boxes for us. Um, and so DoubleNot is the choice that we went with because it had the functionality to do all these things. Um, we chose DoubleNot um, back in 2014. So it was a, a younger, smaller company then, um, but there's a lot of things that it could do then and they've added a ton of functionality since that time. One thing that's been huge during this pandemic for us uh, was the ability that, to access it from home. So it's web-based, uh, which means that as long as you have access to the internet and you've either saved or remember your password, uh, you can get in and have um, access to everything that you do at your desktop at work. So our previous database was on our server here at the Nature Center. And so um, 
you could only access it if you could VPN into it. Um, for instance, I think I'll mention have this down later, but uh, we were actually at a National Association for Interpretation Conference. There was severe weather back home. Uh, office was closed. We were able to log into the database from the 15 pasture van. We passed out phone numbers and we called participants and told them the program was, uh, was canceled from uh, Southern Indiana. So that functionality, that access is huge. Um, we all know working in the Nature Center field that uh, it's not an eight to five job. And so being able to get in there and do things um, at odd times was really helpful. Um, it can process a large quantity. So that's one of the things that we were looking at from the day camp uh, registration um, situation. We, like I said, have over a thousand spots and we're 85% full at the end of, of the first day of registration. So we needed a software that could handle that volume um, and double knot was able to um, a few other software companies were like "Ooh, that's maybe beyond our capacity so that was an important factor for us uh, that connecting memberships to registration was really nice the other thing that's been um, great that i'm not sure we even realized we wanted uh, was that it tracks wait lists for us so for every program that you set up you can say how many people you want to be able to be on the wait list and then if someone calls up and cancels or um, if you give them the ability cancels their own registration uh, you can set the system up to automatically send an email to the next person on the wait list and say hey a spot's become available would you like it um, and that's been fantastic for camp because we used to manage that list manually um, have to make all those phone calls write all those emails um, and now while there is some manual touch to it and we reach out because um, not everyone sees that original email i would say about 70 to 80 percent of the families take care of it on their own um, and they do it again at odd hours um, that works for them. So that's been um, fantastic for us. The other thing that was huge for us for day camp um, was health forms that were required by the state licensing to track and keep. Uh, through Double Knot, we were able to automate that. Um, and I'll be able to show you a little bit how, how we did that. So because I was the camp director when we started Double Knot, I want to share with you a few of the things um, that we really wanted to uh, make sure that we could provide for users and then also things that worked really well for us. So um, Alyssa is going to pass me the ability to screen share here and then I am going to show you kind of what it looks like from the user side and what our families experience and then also um, take a look at what it looks like for us. So you should be able to see our day camp registration page. This is a, um, a dummy registration that I actually just copied from 2019. Um, but we're able to populate all of this. And if you look at the URL, URL at the top, it does say doublenot.com, but it's got all of our colors and branding on it. So our marketing department, you know, makes this nice uh, banner at the top. We populate it with all the information. We have a link to the camp brochure just from this page. You can see camps with avail availability, which I'll show you later. Uh, we offered before and after care and have an explanation. So lots of details here. Um, you can also set when registration becomes available. So like I said, our camp is concert tickets. It's really important that it's not available until the right day at the right time. So if you were trying to get into here, all this information would be available to you, but there is a red warning that says registration's not yet available. So it also gives you a age requirement. We offer camp for, um, this again was set up for 2019. So those dates will be a little bit off, um, but for three-year-olds all the way up to um, 16-year-olds. It gives you when registration begins, last day to register, um, where it's happening, and then they can share it. So if you're a family and you wanna go in and register, you just pop here and hit the register button. Um, if you already have an account, you put your name in, um, and or you're already signed in, it automatically goes there. So these are some kids that are you know, in that family, in the tester family. Um, so let's say we'll pick one of them and we're gonna send one kid to camp. So it's all straightforward here. We've populated um, all the directions about what has to happen. Say someone I've signed up before, um, I'm not gonna put myself in, so, um, cause I am not the right age, unfortunately, um, to attend camp. So uh, we're gonna send Andrew to camp and we're gonna give him a birth date. Um, again, the birth date automatically checks um, to make sure that it is, uh, 
valuable. We had a number of families that uh, liked to fudge their kids' birth dates in order to get them in the session they wanted to do. Um, so here they either need to uh, flat out lie to us, which has happened, um, or the system controls which sessions they can register for. Uh, we get to develop which forms we want them to fill out. So for us, we have a t-shirt size and attend with because we order the t-shirts ahead of time and we wanna know on the front end who they're gonna attend with. We have a health form. And then um, for our overnight camps, we also have uh, authorization to dispense medication. Um, the asterisk here means it has to be completed before the family can check out on the other end. Uh, most camps, I think, make the health form completed for checkout, and we do that for all of our other programs. Um, but again, because of the high pressure situation of our camp registration, we let families come back in and do that later. So we're going to choose a t-shirt size for our camper. Um, and then we have the opportunity, again, to sell additional t-shirts. So they just write in the size that they want that gets added to their bill. So say we want to do two adult smalls for, for parents. Uh, and then they can add that. And then once that's complete, they can move along. And we end up uh, with the registration page. Uh, the really nice thing for us, it trips families up a little bit once uh, until they learn the session, is that if they have multiple kids, they all end up on the same registration. So this is a drop down menu and you get to choose which child you're making a schedule for. And then here's another drop down menu, which is which week of camp they're registering for. Um, so if we want to send Andrew July 20th through 24th, um, only the camps that are available to Andrew are ones that he can be registered for. Um, so he can go to adventure camp that week, and if a session were full, it would say that he would be placed on the wait list. And so over here it says registered. If he was placed on the wait list, it would say wait listed. So the family knows right away whether they're in the session or not, so they can go ahead and choose a second choice if they need to. Uh, we can register Andrew for another week of camp and the same, same thing, we'll send them to um, fishing. And then if those are the two sessions they want to do, they just hit continue and move along. Then we have um, the total here. Um, again, this is tied to their membership. So I think um, Brian will show you later. Um, but if this was an account that had a membership associated with it, with it uh, their discount would be right here. Um, also, we offer scholarships. And so when we offer those scholarships, we provide a discount code that we set up in DoubleNOT. They type the discount code in, hit apply, and it's automatically deducted. Um, so all of that stuff is handled. And then later on, we can run a report and see how often the discount code was used and for what amount of money um, for tracking. And then here's the checkout um, page. So uh, you have the choice of a credit card, gift card, or whether you want to let them mail it in. We set it up so that they can't do that, um, but we will sometimes allow that for um, a walk-up registration. Um, so we have to fill in a few things. Again, you can set up what fields they absolutely have to complete in order to check out, um, which is great. They can't skip uh, those written registration forms. They can omit a lot of things. Um, and then you can send an email confirmation um, is normally sent. Sometimes when I go in and do maintenance to an account or slide kids around, I'll not send the confirmation so the parents don't get a bunch of emails. Um, and then you simply complete the order. Um, and it knows that it's not an email address, so it's mad at me. Um, it's smart about the formats. So in any case, um, one thing that was challenging for me as a camp director was that um, without all of those people lining up, I didn't get a chance to have a conversation with them on a regular basis. Um, but this worked a lot better for families. Uh, there's definitely a learning curve. The first couple of years, we had families who didn't notice the drop down menus. We had families who weren't sure how to do it. And um, we still have a, a couple of grandparents and a great grandma now um, who this is not, this does not work for them. Um, they don't have the technology at home. They're not familiar with it. Uh, and for those folks, they, um, they stop in, they give us a call, and our front office is able to, um, to just go ahead and do, do the front loading for them. One tool that's been very fantastic for us, um, this is our day camp page, is that we're able to set up a check nature day camp availability. And so what this does is gives our families the opportunity to pop on and say, oh gosh, I'd really like to register for another session of camp this summer. They can come over here, it's sorted by date, um, and it lets them know how many spots there are in each session. 
um, and how many remaining spaces there are as well. And so rather than going in there and just popping around, uh, they can be informed about what options are available. Uh, that's been really nice for us um, because we can help direct families. And on a phone call, it helps our staff as well. They can use this page and say, uh, you're interested in habitat hunters. There's a spot available this week, this week, and this week. Which one would you like? Uh, and it's much, much faster than our other process, which was flipping through pages of paper with names written into lines um, to make that happen. So it allows us to serve our guests much more quickly, and it empowers them with the information they need to make decisions for their family. Again, when you're sitting down with your family, at eight o'clock at night after dinner and trying to figure out the kids schedule that information's at their fingertips they don't have to try and make it work um, for us one thing that i would mention is um, all the data in double knot comes out like a database um, so for me a big piece of the learning curve was becoming really savvy with excel uh, which thankfully i was a bio major and did a lot of data management um, but then mail merging it into word documents to get things that look nice so for instance um, we have them fill out health forms that data comes out as columns of permission to treat photo release are they allergic to anything do they have an EpiPen? and then what we do is we place it into a mail merged health form and print this so that we have the paper copy like the state wants us to have um, and we have something that our camp staff can actually look at so they're not going into the database constantly um, so that was a learning curve but um, I'll tell you that our uh, our turn-in of health forms is well over 90 percent ahead of camp um, and prior to using this system uh, it was right around 50%. We were chasing a ton of health forms. So we still have paper copies available. Um, we can email paper copies to families. We definitely work around double knot for some families for whom that doesn't work. Um, but for lots of families, this is the most convenient way to do it. And they submit it to us in that way. Um, this year we started entering those paper copies into double knot so that we have the permanent records of it. Um, so that is, uh, that is kind of how we use it for camp. Those are sort of the big things that Double Knot solved for us that we were hoping to solve with the camp programs. Um, Alyssa, if you want to pop back to the, the main presentation, uh, moving into this role as director of programs, um, I started using Double Knot more heavily for things beyond camp. And um, obviously the numbers I'm going to share with you are not 2020 numbers, but in 2019, um, we served about 200 people through free drop-in programs, uh, or not 200 people, we had 200 free drop-in programs. Um, we had over 40 workshops or field trips. Those are kayak trips, snowshoe hikes, um, how to make a basket, how to make soap, those kinds of things. And then we had about 20,000 drop-in visitors um, to the Nature Center, Visitor Center. So we don't charge admission. So that's one functionality that we don't use um, here at Chippewa. Um, but the nice thing about Double Knot was I mentioned that calendar that we wanted people to be able to take a peek at a calendar and see, um, be able to see what they wanted to participate in. So um, Alyssa, if you want to pop back over to me real quick, I'm going to show that calendar and kind of show how um, the visitor gets to interact with it. So this is our homepage at Chippewa Nature Center and right up here in the corner we have our calendar and this is for all of our events that people can register for. We could place our camp programs on the calendar. Um, we choose not to uh, because we have 11 sessions a week and it would overwhelm the calendar. So we have a separate page and a separate link for that. But our public programs are all listed. So this is August um, and we have color coded these so people kind of know what they're getting into. Uh, because of the pandemic, um, up until September, uh, we have at made all of our programs pre-registered. There aren't walk-in programs for, with the exception of our Homestead Sundays, Story Hour, and um, some Walk Midland things. Um, all the rest are pre-registered. So right now the red means it's pre-registered fee or not. Green means it's free. You can just show up. You don't have to do anything um, ahead of time. And then our orange is affiliate groups that meet here at the Nature Center. We're able to put their things on our calendar as well. So from the family's perspective, they can come to this calendar. They can click through. We are populated through the end of November right now. Um, they can choose story hour, pulls up a little bit of information here, um, lets them know they can add it to their own calendar. They can see how to get here, how to get more information. Cancellation policy is right there. 
Um, and there's no further action here. They're not registering for this program. It's just a place to gather more information. Um, if instead it's a program that they need to register for, um, like Paddles and Pints that's coming up, they can hover on it and get a date and time. Once they click on it, um, you can see right here, it's a full program. All registrations will be waitlisted. So they know right from the get-go that it's full, but they're welcome to be on a wait list. So we have all the information here. Again, the cost is added, cancellation policy. There's an age requirement for this one. You have to be 21 or older to participate in Paddles and Pints. And then, um, and then they can go ahead and go about the process. And again, they can log in, their membership is accounted for, um, and they can just move forward. Plenty of people still call us. Plenty of people um, get on the phone, which our phone is answered by a human being every hour that we're open, um, and walk through this process over the phone with our staff. So that was really important to us too, is that our staff have access to go in and take care of anything that needs to happen. Um, while it empowers the users who want to do that, um, it also did not take away any of the ability for our staff to serve customers um, in a personal way. And then the other thing that I really love about Double Knot um, is we have a communication center. So I can go in um, the day of a program, I can pull all the participants that are participating in it and send them a note reminding them what to pack for this, where to meet, what time to be there, and let us know if you're not coming. Um, where previously that would have been a lot of exporting and importing and copying and pasting, um, it's all integrated right into the system. So it allows us to do that personal touch. And it's not just me as the director of programs. All of our staff that lead these programs have the ability to do that. And so um, they can send a packing list, they can send reminders, um, we can send out cancellations that way, but then we also follow up with a phone call for that. Um, so there's a lot of parts and pieces. Um, a lot of functionality here that allows us to communicate more effectively um, with our participants than when we were doing um, paper and database. Um, it's just more fully integrated and we can share more information in a timely manner. Um, and it is still personal. We're still signing our names. We're still providing our emails. Um, we have the info at here um, because that's marketing's strong preference to have a consistent email there. Um, but when we send out those notes, they come from our email addresses um, when we're logged into DoubleNet, which is really fantastic. One other functionality, um, like I said, we don't have admission here at the Nature Center, but we have used ticketing for a film festival that we host. Um, we used to mail all 650 tickets to the people who purchased them. We still mail some because there's still folks who don't have a printer at home or don't have a smartphone um, to save that ticket to. Um, but I would say we mail 20 tickets. Um, and so then those costs are supporting the Nature Center instead of um, just being spent on postage when it's not necessary. And uh, I'll say that the, the little ding that your smartphone uses when it scans a ticket is a very satisfying <laughs> experience. So uh, it really has enabled us to kind of move into the 21st century um, while still communicating with our users, knowing them well, and um, and keeping it personal by signing our names, um, having conversations on the phone, um, and following up. Uh, the response has been just generally very, very positive. Um, one thing that Double Knot had that some other systems didn't have was that it's live tracking of spaces. So for camp, that's really important. Um, that we don't overfill and for programs like paddles and pints where you have a fixed number of kayaks um, double knot was live whereas some of the other systems we were looking at they didn't update you know between one and four times a day um, which just doesn't work when you have a really finite number of um, of spots available for a particular program um, one thing that we have found too is that we have to have some gurus for double knot um, i'm the program guru. I, I know the ins and outs of the programs and the events. Um, our finance person handles the finances and then marketing. Um, it makes it all look amazing and also um, handles the communication for a lot of those things. So there's, um, there's a lot to learn, a lot of functionality, um, but our visitors have by and large really enjoyed being able to kind of take things into, um, into their own hands. And I think um, we're gonna chat about membership a little bit and I don't have a screen to show, so Alyssa, you're welcome to pull that back um, to our presentation. Um, I mentioned before that one of the things we wanted out of integrating membership into sort of our registration software was that um, 
consistent application of membership benefits. So being a, an organization that entry is free, um, we can't waive that membership benefit around. So it really is, um, you know, getting into some of our festivals for free and then also a discount on some of our programs. And so what Double Knot enables us to do is to provide that consistent discount that's actually provided to our members and, and not to non-members. So it helps us to manage that really well. Um, the other piece of it, again, is that autonomy that our, our visitors and our members have is they can renew their membership without having to interact with us. Um, while we love to interact with them, um, some people just prefer to check the box and be done with it. And many of our older members come in and they write the check every year and that's amazing. Um, but many of our younger families want to click the box, they get the email that reminds them that it's due and they just take care of it. And that is more convenient for them and it's actually more user friendly for them. Um, on our end, it's also a lot easier to pull the data about who needs to renew, who hasn't renewed. Um, and a new feature that Double Knot put out, I shouldn't say new because it's been a little while, is um, the ability for families to choose um, to automatically renew their membership. So there's a box when they're making a membership that they can they can check and then it automatically happens. And so that's um, that saves staff time and resources that allows us to focus on other things. Um, and we're hoping eventually that that will be um, time and energy that's directed towards cultivating donors um, rather than just maintaining regular memberships um, and that can sort of be self-maintaining. Brian's going to talk you through the membership end because that is not my um, that's not my area of expertise with Double Knot because um, I'm definitely the program side of things so he's going to share just some some tips and some functionality there that is um, really makes things a lot easier for both the users and for um, for the organization itself. Thank you, Jen. All right, hopefully everybody can see this screen. It's kind of a dummied up screen from our demo system here. Just want to show you a couple of basic things here. Um, talking about membership. So uh, somebody wanted to buy, say, for instance, a family membership. Uh, one thing that you can offer is the ability to uh, purchase a membership as a gift for somebody else. So that's the first question that is being presented. So you can track both who the gift is from and who it's for. You also have the opportunity to uh, let the recipient know about the gift by email. So you can put in their email address, you can type in a message and even control when that message is delivered. Um, so that's, that's really up to you. Uh, but if I were buying a membership for myself, I would continue here. And now I want to know how many named family members are part of this family membership. So I'm going to say that uh, there's the member and my spouse, and now it wants to know member number one. And I'm just pulling this up out of my browser history here. This is coming up from Double Knot, just my browser. Fill in the information, put in the spousal information. And there she is. And you can again decide what information is required versus optional. We continue on. How many children might be part of this membership? We'll say one, and the age of that child, with well, not 167, 16 year old child. And now we've got our shopping cart. So we can see the information that's included, the two named members. And Jen just mentioned this feature the fact that you have the opportunity uh, to indicate that you want to automatically renew when it expires. So that's a great feature uh, that benefits your members. Um, it's set it and forget it, and you won't have to go chasing them down for expiration, uh, for renewal every year. And we move on to the checkout page. But before we do, we have an opportunity to upsell and to ask for a donation. This is a standard piece of functionality that almost every client uses as part of their sales path. You have control over the amounts that you want to present and how they're presented, including the ability for somebody to enter in their own amount. And then you could type that in or and then click donate or no thanks. And we come to our payment screen. Um, Jen mentioned the ability to take credit cards as well as not pay anything right now. Uh, but there's also the ability to do e-checks, electronic checks, electronic fund transfer, as well as using electronic gift cards that are part of the system. So you can both purchase and redeem gift cards in the program. 
And so at this point, I'm gonna fill in the credit card information and it's asking for the cardholder number. And uh, we, it already knows who the members, family membership are. So who does the credit card belong to? And it'll fill in all of that information. And you go to make your payment. And it finishes up with a receipt. In, with a receipt, there it is. Okay, with all of the uh, the information, and if um, uh, if you're using digital membership cards, you've got the ability to include those, and the recipient can save those digital membership cards to their their wallet uh, on their on their phones if you want to. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Um, the um, one other thing I want to show you here, um, and this was was mentioned before about um, you know with an account that has a membership, when you uh, add something, it'll automatically show that discount. So if somebody wanted to buy an admission, and they're going to come on let's say Saturday at 10:30 uh, a.m. and where this time, if I'm the end, if I'm the user, the customer. I'm going to now enter in my ID and password. So now it knows who I am. It understands that I am a member by looking at my account. And I'm buying admission. So I'm going to have one adult and one child. And when I get to that checkout page, you can see that the member discount has automatically been added because it recognizes them. Um, and then finally, one other thing to show you here with uh, with memberships, um, this is an actual Nature Center client of ours, the Audubon Community Nature Center in upstate New York. Uh, they go to, we're going to go to their list of programs, and we're going to go sign up for a, a first Friday summers with the Loomis Creek Ospreys. Um, and it's got all that information. You saw this already from Jen, something similar. But this time we're gonna continue on as a guest. So it doesn't know who we are. And it's gonna be adult and a child. And now when we get to the shopping cart, if you look up here in the corner, you'll see an upsell opportunity. So we see the full prices and it's telling us that, hey, if you were a member, you could save some money. So if I wanna go ahead and add that membership, it goes right to the membership page. I can choose the appropriate membership for myself. Again, is it for me or for as a gift? And I would fill in that information like we saw last time. And now when it comes back, the membership has been added to the cart and that discount has been automatically added. So all I had to do was spend $45 to save $3.50. That makes perfect sense. And then you would just continue on through the rest of it. Um, so that uh, that's just an example for uh, for membership. Uh, there are other things, of course, that uh, that we're going to be able to talk about. One of the things that that Double Knot can do uh, that I think makes things much easier for both you and your clients and your customers is the ability to use it for things like merchandise and the ability to do things in a mobile format. From, from your operator standpoint. So Jen's gonna talk about that for just a second. So we were, um, we were back when we implemented Double Knot in 2014, we were using a, a standard cash register, um, which was not electronic, it was not iPad. Um, sometime after that, we switched to uh, an electronic type system, but it was not Double Knot system. Um, Hardware software worked with varying reliability, usually not well on weekends when there were lots of guests lined up in the visitor uh, in the store. Um, but we switched over to the double knot system uh, probably in the last two or three years, and um, it has been working much better for us. Um, we do have the option of logging people in as members, which which we are not doing. Um, our front office has had a little bit of resistance to um, to taking that extra step to do. Um, but it works very, very well as a, as a point of sale system uh, in our store um, because you can categorize things, you can decide which buttons are available, um, and it's very, very much more smooth than um, the other system we were using. But
but from a program perspective, um, it's opened the door to do some things that we couldn't do before. And one of that, um, one of those things is our native plant sale. Um, we would have a native plant sale, we would have checkout booths, but if people wanted to pay by credit card, they had to take a slip, um, walk down the sidewalk, walk into the visitor center, um, and then do their credit card inside. Uh, what the system allowed us to do was to bring that credit card payment out to the actual plant sale. And so people did not have to um, take that extra step of leaving their plants, heading in, making a payment, and coming back out. Um, and in fact, the system is so simple that the checkout stations were manned by our volunteers. So we uh, basically did a five-minute training with tech savvy volunteers not every volunteer is ready to do this um, but volunteers that were pretty comfortable with an ipad and um and they were able to just run with it for for a two-hour shift so that was fantastic um, the other thing that worked for us um, is the online store we don't utilize that on a regular basis um, most of our stuff is very local we're not shipping things so we don't have an online store presence on a regular basis um, but during the pandemic last year uh, we couldn't hold the native plant sale in person. Um, so through Double Knot, we were able to set it up um, where people from home could log on. They could um, choose whether they wanted to look at wildflowers, shrubs, grasses, trees, or whether they wanted to look at plants for part shade or full sun. And I was able to put all of the plants into those categories so they could choose which category they wanted to look. Um, they selected how many they wanted of the plants. Um, they checked out and paid online. We received the order, printed it, filled it, and they did curbside pickup um, at pre-scheduled times. Um, Double Knot's functionality for inventory was new at that time, um, and so it was a little bit glitchy for the first day of the plant sale. I got in touch with them, they were able to, to fix it, and um, the rest of the sale went pretty smoothly. It allowed us to hold an event that we weren't otherwise able to hold, and it was our first time using an online store, um, and so I spent about a week um, in there playing, setting it up, trying things, testing, um, but it was very doable, um, and it enabled us to have uh, a revenue uh, event in 2020 um, when nearly everything else got canceled. So that was very beneficial. Um, the other thing that we started doing is um, utilizing it. We have two major events a year that we charge admission for non-members and Double Knot has allowed us to take um, that out uh, to our pavilions or our driveway where we're doing check-ins for that. Um, and we, again, can process credit cards. So not everyone shows up to uh, an event with cash. And so it's really facilitated kind of being welcoming for a broader, a broader population. Um, so we have really enjoyed that piece of it. Again, um, I don't get to play in that all the time, just, <laughs> just on special occasions. Um, so Brian's gonna share just a quick peek for you about what that looks like, um, because I, do it sort of on the side. <laughs> okay, uh, we are now inside of, of the Double Knot system and I'm just gonna show you very quickly what it looks like for an operator uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, make a sale. So we go here to sales station and to a cash register and you can see that the look and feel of a cash register, I mean, you have total control over what things look like. Uh, what you're looking at here is, for instance, if you were perhaps working um, in the gift shop. So you might have different items that you're selling and uh, you can look at it that way, but you don't, you're not limited to that. If you have the security rights to do so, you could actually set up multiple types of sales areas, sales stations, and now you can see it has a very different look and feel. So. You might have something for, uh, like I said, the gift shop, something for the front desk. Uh, if you work in the education department and your job is to sell you know, uh, camp registration, then it could be set up so that that's all you can do. That's totally up to however you want to set that up. So if I'm at the entrance uh, to sell a ticket, it's very simple. I'm using my mouse, but this is also touch screen enabled, so I could use my finger as well. You could do timed admissions or general admissions. So when I click, it's going to add that into the cart. Out of the way. Um, and maybe I've got a couple of kids with me and grandma's come along as well. Um, maybe you're running some kind of special. Hey, if you, you know, when you come in today, you can buy our uh, commemorative anniversary 
puzzle for half price or whatever it might be. And other things you could sell as well, gift cards and, and uh, so forth. So you can see that it's adding all these things into the shopping cart. You can work with taxes if that's necessary. You could include things like um, surcharges or uh, uh, required contributions, things like that. So I'm coming up with a total of $50.50. If I were paying by credit card, I would simply, if I were the customer, I uh, would simply pop the credit card into the EMB card reader and it would do its job. Of course, there are other ways that you can pay as well, including good old American cash. And it is giving us the total amount due and the system is calculating the most common amounts that might be tendered. So if the customer hands me three $20 bills, click on 60. At this point, the, uh, the cash drawer would pop open. It would tell the operator how much change to give. Uh, you could print out a physical receipt if you want to, or you could have a digital receipt sent either by text or by email. Uh, so that is uh, really kind of the, the just a basic way of of being able to um, you know to do to do a, a sale from from inside the system. So it looks simple, uh, but of course, you know, simple. <laughs> Simple is in the eyes of the beholder, um, as it is without the entire throughout the entire system. I mean, we we're trying to make things easier for you, so that you can make things easier for your customers to have more of a personal touch. But there are always hiccups uh, or challenges along the way, and we try to be as transparent as possible. Nothing is ever going to be perfect, and so Jen is going to let you know about a couple of the the uh, the little roadblocks that she hit along the way. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Um, I mean, we all know that there's no perfect system. I can tell you the system that we were using before uh, Double Knot had a ton of imperfections and was um, super staff heavy and very challenging. Um, but we have had some challenges with Double Knot. Um, one was a learning curve, and I I know we're going to address questions later. But but one of those questions was uh, was learning curve and. Um, we rolled double knot out it was supposed to come a couple months earlier probably on the nature center's end but camp was the first program that we that we rolled double knot out with and i would highly encourage folks to not um choose their biggest most in-demand program to be the first thing that you um, put into double knot and use so there was a lot of time um, spent at my dining room table with my husband who is a very computer savvy individual um, teaching me how to do mail merge and um, walking me through just some of the logistics on our end that we needed to do to get the information back out of double knot that i was used to having on paper copies um, Double Knot was amazing about helping us get it all set up and ready to go and answering questions. Um, but I just had a ton to learn and I wouldn't choose to uh, roll out your largest program as your first thing. Um, like I said, we have been using Double Knot for camp registrations since 2014 for all of our registrations. Um, 2021 was a really hard year for us. Uh, we set our camp registration. We always set it for the first Tuesday in um, March opens at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we we opened it and um, the system was running incredibly slow. Like in the first 20 or 30 minutes, um, we had probably about a dozen registrations come through and families were like reloading and we couldn't get in to manage things. Um, and it just, it just was not working. Um, so eventually I was able to get in, the system let me in and I shut down camp registration. I changed the registration date to like three weeks out. We shut it down. We um, posted on our Facebook page and our website that like we were having technical issues and that we would be in touch with um, with folks about how to proceed. And so um, so we got in touch with Double Knot. It took a couple hours. I'm in the Eastern time zone. Um, they are based on the West Coast, although they do have um, text now throughout. And um, and figured out that there was another organization that um, started a process that uh, shouldn't have started and it just used a tremendous amount of bandwidth and basically slowed the whole system down for everyone. So they've since worked on that, um, worked on processes, added capacity. So that was that was rough, just, you know, shut down our biggest moneymaker of the year. 
Um, so we scheduled a second registration date and time, communicated that, um, talked with Double Knot, talked with our contact there, ensured that that date was good, that it worked for them, that we'd have someone on call just in case we had a hiccup again. Um, published it, reset the date in the system, double checked to make sure that the registration date was correct. Um, our camp director woke up that morning, double checked the date, the date wasn't correct. He went in and fixed it. Um, for when registration opened, um, came in, went in and checked, it had reverted, um, fixed it again, it had reverted. I went in and I fixed it, it had reverted. We could not reset the date for registration to open um, that morning. Double Knot has not been able to get it to do that again, um, but for whatever reason that morning, um, four of us tried to reset the date. Um, for registration and it appeared to hold for like a little while and then would revert because a few registrations did manage to make it through. Um, we could do registrations on the back end because we're administrators. We can register anyone anytime we feel like it. Um, but again, that ability for hundreds of people to register at one time was gone. And so um, we tried getting in touch with Double Knot. Um, we were not able to establish contact quickly for them to try and fix it on the back side. So once again, we shut it down um, and we actually flipped to a different double knot functionality, um, which is their survey function. And so you have the ability to design a survey um, and then it's a web-based survey. You put it out there, people complete it. It's saved into a database um, and uh, you can get email responses. So we quickly put together a survey. What's your name? What's your child's name? What's your first choice? What's your second choice? Um, who's your second child? First choice, second choice. Um, and then accepted registrations for uh, 24 hours, uh, then drew a line and had a lottery. So um, in 2021, uh, our staff spent hundreds of hours <laughs> entering it. Our day camp director and our front office staff members spent most of the week entering uh, camp registrations by hand, which is why we had selected a database system in the first place. Um, that was very challenging and our uh, our camp director is a little bit traumatized by it still. Um, but what came out of it is some really honest conversations with Double Knot about um, you know why that happened. They weren't able to figure out why that particular morning that piece of, of code wasn't working. Um, but they suffered from a lot of the same things that a lot of us suffered in the pandemic is that they had had staff cut um, at exactly the time that their demand went up. Um, and so their response time really slowed down um, through 2020 and 2021. Um, their ability to fix glitches slowed down a little bit um, during that time as well. And so in the last several months, we've seen better response time, um, more fixes to any little issues that are happening. Um, and they had really honest conversations with us about, you know, why it happened, why I couldn't get a hold of someone, um, you know, what was going on. And they've, and they've actually, I don't know if it's a result of us or other, other places having issues too. They have uh, like a more urgent helpline now um, that you can address. And ultimately, um, we decided to stay with Double Knot, as challenging as that was, um, as hard as that was, we lost a couple of families that chose not to come to camp because of their frustration. Um, all the other families were incredibly patient and understanding. Um, Double Knot holds all of our data <laughs> and it's integrated um, into every aspect of the work that we do here at the Nature Center from marketing to point of sale system, to membership, to programs. And we like that it's integrated in that way. Um, and that means that uh, we have to come to the table and have honest conversations with them about uh, what's working for us and what's not working for us. And, um, and they have listened. And so they have, they have said, you know, yeah, that's, that's real. Um, you know, we messed up, something happened there. You should have been able to get a someone, get a hold of someone, we'll work on fixing that. Um, they have listened when um, we've needed functionality that didn't exist. And I think, um, you know, when we started in 2014, uh, they were not as large of a company as they, as they are now, um, but they, they do serve this type of organization really well. Um, and they do uh, listen to what our needs are. Um, and some of the other companies that we talked with, um, the Nature Center was like the small fish 
in the in the people that they were serving um, and double knot was specifically serving camps and specifically serving nature centers and specifically serving museums and so they're willing to listen to what our challenges and issues are um, and even though we had sort of a epic crash and burn um, this spring um, the functionality that it brought to us made it worth us worth it for us to come back to the table and say like how how can we move forward from here how can we fix this um, how can we continue to serve our visitors uh, really well? And so the truth of the matter is that 99.7% of the time, our visitors love uh, the ability that they have um, to control their experience through Double Knot. And we work really hard to be a really professional organization, um, to put out materials that look professional um, and that, um, are welcoming to people and are easy to engage with. Um, and we do that in our personal interaction and we feel like Double Knot, with the exception of camp registration 2021, um, is able to do that for us um, as well. And it lets us have that personal connection. I will add one thing that, um, that I forgot to put in our, our notes um, that has changed, uh, changed our donor um, recognition is our executive director can sit there and look up um, on Double Knot and see if their kids came to camp, see if they've been on a kayaking trip, see what their last donation was. Um, and he can do that in 15 seconds from his office chair without talking to 50 different staff um, to find out what that person's connection is to the Nature Center. And he can include that in his two or three sentence thank you note. Um, so having it all integrated together for us um, has been huge. And I will say that we don't use everything that Double Knot has to offer. So we're a big organization and we have a way of doing things and sometimes we're slow to change. And so there's stuff that Double Knot can do um, that we haven't yet jumped into and taken advantage of that could actually help us serve our visitors even better. So Brian's gonna share some of those things with you that might be of interest to you. Um, and know that if you have placed a question in the chat box, we will chat about that. We're gonna make sure that we save time um, to specifically talk about those questions. Fantastic. All right, um, so I'm just gonna to touch on just a couple of these things. I'm gonna show a real quick example of, of booking a field trip. I'm gonna show a real quick example of a report. And then we're gonna move into the area of fundraising for a little bit. And, and as Jen said, we're gonna save some time there at the end for, for any of your questions that you've posted. So um, let me, let's see, bring, whoops. I need the screen to share, Melissa. There we go, thank you. All right. Um, so just so you can see this very quickly, this is booking a field trip. I'm using an actual client here. This is a museum, but it, it could be a nature center as well. Uh, there was a Crucian Egyptian museum. They do a lot of work with, uh, with field trips. Uh, they've broken things down into what they call categories. Essentially, they split the year into in half. Um, so if I wanted to bring a group, uh, it, you know, at some point, what you can do, the group leader can say, all right, well, I know what time that I want to bring my group. Now I'm gonna click on the time and now it'll show me which days are available. I could do it the other way. I could say, I know what day I wanna come, now show me the times that are available on that day. You end up in the same place, it's just a matter of, of where you start. So let's say that I wanna come on January the 20th at 11 a.m., click reserve. And now it's gonna ask uh, some questions. For instance, are you a Title I school, yes or no? That could affect the pricing. Uh, that's being offered. Wants to know a little bit of information about the group now. So I'm putting in the group name and I'm putting in the leader, leader and all that's coming in from my browser history here. Uh, one really nice feature here is that you can decide what constitutes a group. In this case, a group is considered between, uh, between 30 and 40 people. You can also, if you want to, enforce a ratio of adults to students. So if I'm saying that I've got four teachers and I've got three chaperones and I've got uh, 30 students, then the system will allow me to continue because the total number of people is between 30 and 40 and I have a ratio of at least one adult for every seven students. 
So you can use that feature or not. What grade is this for? And now they've chosen to include some information here about, uh, about the visit, some policies and procedures, rules and regulations, which the group leader must acknowledge and agree to before continuing. Now they're giving some information about the payment system. In this particular case, um, all they're doing is taking a reservation. They're not accepting any money right now. They're gonna end up billing them for this. So when we say continue, it presents our invoice or our shopping cart. So you can see how it's broken down, students, teachers, chaperones. Um, you can see that it's not asking for any money. Now, of course, you may have a different policy. Perhaps you say uh, you need a $100 deposit in order to uh, lock your time, your date and time. So I could change this and now provide a credit card to pay the $100 and then you can bill them for the balance due, or if you wanted to, you could even allow them to say, yeah, go ahead, you know, two weeks before the event or whatever the date is, I want you to charge my credit card on file for the next payment. If I wanted to, I could also pay it in full. That's up to you. And we continue, there is that donation ask. You'll see that this looks very different from the other donation asks that we've seen so far. And now we get to our payment screen. Under normal circumstances, this would say total due is zero because you're not, they're not asking for any money. And uh, you would simply then complete the reservation and then your education department folks would take over. Uh, so that's uh, a quick thing on a field trip. Uh, one other thing that I want to show you here is uh, reporting. The system comes with 100 or so standard reports and uh, they are laid out in sort of a logical fashion. Whoops, let's go back there. One too far, there we go. So they're laid out in kind of a logical fashion here so to make them easier to navigate. These are for standard reports. So if I come here under financial reports, I can see all my general financial reports, but then I can see standard reports that are dealing with very specific topics like accounting reports, reports that deal with any discounts you might offer, uh, any products that you might sell, or general sales reports. So if I wanna go ahead and run a revenue report, um, it's going to go ahead and run that, and it defaults to yesterday's date, but I could change it to whatever time period I want. But here are my numbers for yesterday. And from here, if I wanted to, I with one click, I could, whoops, I could change this and save it to an Excel spreadsheet, or I could save it to a Word document or uh, a text file. But I also have the ability to come in here and with one click, customize this report. So I can take something out, I can add a new field in, I could change the description, I could change the sort order, I could even change the function of that particular field, or the way the data shows up. I make my changes, I can preview it, and then once I'm happy with it, I simply click on the Save As button. You give it a new name, and now you have a new report, a custom report. So here are all the standard reports, and if I scroll down, here are some custom reports. So you don't need to be a programmer to go in and build custom reports. You can simply take a standard report and make changes. As far as donations are concerned, we haven't really talked too much about that, but we've got that full capability for online donations. Uh, you've seen the integrated donation request at really at every checkout along the sales path. Um, you can also make a donation by, if you're an operator, if I come back here to my sales station, if I come down here, I can see all of the other things that I can do. So if I wanna make a donation and add it into the shopping cart, I can certainly do so. Um, and just say I wanna make a donation to the city museum. And now it wants to know who exactly is making this donation. And we'll say it's me. And I've got multiple accounts here, but we'll take this one. And I'm going to make a $20 donation one time. 
and now it has added it into my shopping cart. So I, I can combine all these different things. Just because I don't have a button for it doesn't mean that I can't add more things to it. So um, that's some of the things that you can do with the system. I mean, as far as fundraising is concerned, um, you know, it's what we're focusing on here in, in the Double Knot program primarily is on the transaction side of things, right? S selling a membership, uh, program registrations, admissions, taking a donations. But one of the things that helps you keep that, that personal touch with your customers, because that's one of the things we're focusing on today, is understanding even more information about them and, and how they interact with you. So if you really want to dive deep into that area, if you've got a very sophisticated operation or a very advanced um, fundraising team, then, then we've got the tool to, to do that. And it's by using an optional module that we have, an optional CRM module that we call Clearview. And so here to show you kind of a brief look at just a couple of those CRM and advanced fundraising features is Chantal Onesia Gonzalez, who is our senior project manager for Clearview. Thank you, Brian. Um, yeah, I'm just going to show a couple of quick things in Clearview so that we can leave plenty of time for questions. So, and I'm super excited to do that. Um, I have been with Clearview since 2013. Um, and I'll go ahead, as I'm taking the screen over, I'll just give you a small backstory on the CRM. So let me just click that. You should be able to see the Clearview screen on your screen. This acts as the repository, basically, for the Double Knot application. Uh, we have several clients who use the application in conjunction with Double Knot, and then uh, many others who just use Clearview exclusively to track their donations, their moves management opportunities, their campaigns, and contacts with their members and donors. So Clearview gives users the ability to see a 360 degree view of each constituent via these types of dashboards, also in reporting and in lists and in other individual views, which I will show you. Um, so this is our main home dashboard. It's just a mock-up of generally things that you can do in Clearview. Um, just to kind of see an overview of everything that's going on in your database. So we have new donor type trends reporting, um, all kinds of visualizations. We also have lists of actions, lists of lists. Um, everything is drillable into other screens and then directly into donor records. Um, just quickly, I want to show a couple of these dashboards. The actions dashboard is um, used to track contact with your um, members and donors. And on this dashboard, a user can see all of their own actions and the actions that are assigned to other users as well. So for example, um, Jen had mentioned if you wanted to send a, a, have your director send a thank you note, um, he could actually do his research in a prospect record in here, and then you could create an action and send it to him, and he would actually be able to see that on his dashboard to say, oh, there's somebody that I need to do a little research on, and then go ahead and send them a thank you note, and then you'd be able to complete that action. You can do that also right from the dashboard, or you can drill down into the record to do it. And then one other, um, these are obviously just mock-up dashboards that we have in our demo system, but this is also one that might be useful for a type of organization that you're working at. And if you, for example, were thinking about doing a capital campaign um, to raise money for maybe a new building at your nature center, you could track the gifts that are coming in for that campaign just to see how close you are to your goals. And this is a a dashboard that could show you visualizations of that as well. So we have all different types of reports that feed into these dashboards and these panels are all configurable, customizable. You can make a dashboard with everything or just one thing. You can assign them to different people um, depending on who's going to be using each section of the Clearview application. So now I'm just going to drill down into a record here so we can just look at what it looks like to see a constituent. Um, when you first come into the record, you'll see the overview section and there's tabs um, that hold different information. These are part of the constituent view and they can be customized as well. 
You can have also several different views. So if you wanted to only see maybe three of these tabs for certain users, you could do that and create that view and assign it. Um, you can also, if you need to see more information on the constituents record, you can click on the link for their name and it takes you in to see their personal information, uh, any secondary names, personal information, and then flags. So if you're doing mailings, we have a whole segmentation application in Clearview to do direct mail. We have list manager for email campaigns. Um, this is where the flags are located to make sure that those uh, donors don't uh, go into mailings they're not supposed to. Um, and then if we come back to that main screen again, you can see on the left sidebar, we have some quick actions that are available right for this donor. And then these are all of the areas uh, where the repository of information is located for Clearview. So each individual donor has its own um, area uh, with all the information that you would need for that donor. But then also as just a quick view for the donor when you come in, you could make this your main tab that opens when you come into your summary view. And this allows you to see at a quick glance the connections. So the name of the primary and then this particular uh, donor is connected to a company. They also have household members and this shows their giving plus the giving of their household. Um, and then anyone else that's connected to them, either colleagues, friends, neighbors, siblings, anything you want to connect through relationships. If you click on one of these um, numbers, it actually opens into a new tab that will show you a report. And this report will basically show us the giving for that donor where they're soft credited. Um, as you probably know, soft credits allow you to see the overall value that, that a constituent brings to your organization through their influence on other donors giving. So in this report, you can see all of the people who have given and then soft credited that donor. These reports are also drillable, so drill downable. <laughs> so if I clicked on um, a link, it'll take me into either the other person's record, the person I was just at, or the gift itself. And again, it opens a new tab, which is really useful so you don't lose your original place. And now I'm seeing that other person's, the actual gift information. So then if I go back, I can just show you one other quick thing here. If we clicked on the corporate um, link that that donors was attached to, they also have a link dashboard for corporate accounts. So this would be for an organization. And again, quick view of the overall organization's giving with drill down um, areas to go in and do more in-depth research on your giving. And then one just little quick feature here, if you, um, if you click the ellipses right next to the name, you can click to watch. So I had already watched this, um, this donor's record. So anytime they give a gift or an action is created, I will receive an email and it will give me a link to go back to this record for each of the activities. And then that would further reinforce my, I can see what my donor's giving and their value overall in the system. And then you can also add constituents to lists in this area if you wanna track them for any kind of events or email campaigns or anything else that you would want to do with that particular donor's record. And then the very last thing, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to questions because I know you have, I see a lot of questions popping up, so I'm very excited for us to get to those. So I just want to show the moves management in here. Um, this is, as you know, uh, usually for planned giving, major giving type um, if you're doing a, a found, if you have a foundation at your nature center and you're um, trying to get bequests and different types of large giving, that's what our, um, moves management is usually used for. And in Clearview, we call that opportunities. Um, every screen in Clearview, also just to note, is it has an inline edit function, and it also has an edit all function. Edit all makes it very simple to just go ahead and tab through to make your changes if you need to. Um, Within this opportunities section, you can um, set various different things. You can assign to people. Uh, it would make you the primary solicitor when you create the opportunity, but you can assign to others in your organization. You can designate your funds. You can assign volunteers and contacts from the organization. If it's a, a corporate um, giving, 
you might have an organization and you need to know who the contact is to get back to. And then the last thing here, we also uh, provide action tracks, um, which you can set up a list of actions that are um, one after the other. So say you had uh, received part, um, you had opened this opportunity and you send an email and you receive back a notification. The next thing you might want to do is make a phone call a week later and then maybe a week later send a letter or however you're going to contact your donors to steward these opportunities with them. Those can be set up all at once. And as you complete the action, the new one will appear. So they show here on the opportunity. You can also see them in a list, which is, this is the action list. So if I changed it to all, it shows me all the actions that are upcoming. And then of course, if I go back to my actions dashboard, they also would show up here. So as I go through my week, I'll see them in different lists, depending on if they're completed or not. Um, and so that brings us back around to the beginning. There are many more features in Clearview, but I want to get to the questions. So um, thank you so much. And I'm going to turn it back over to Brian. Great. Thank you so much, Chantel. Appreciate it. Um, so uh, that does show you a little bit, I mean, from the, the CRM side and the fundraising side, um, that is um, where the, the real personal touch can come into play because you're learning so much and able to track so much data uh, about about your customers. Um, so we have uh, some questions that have been asked. That's fantastic. We're going to go through some of these questions. And um, if well, we've got about 10 minutes left, if we run out of time, uh, we, we certainly apologize for that. We're going to try to get through this but we're also gonna put uh, one final slide up that has all of our contact information and you are more than welcome to contact any or all of us to ask your specific questions or to just have further conversation about your, your interest in this. So the first question came from Chad, it was for Jen. Um, how long was the implementation phase and did you have to hire additional staff to help manage the new software? For us, the implementation stage was probably um, three or four months, and part of that was um, us mining data out of our other databases and cleaning it up. So um, to be quite frank, our membership database was kind of a disaster, and so a lot of time was spent um, trying to get that in shape um, before it was uploaded into Double Knot. And, um, and that was just a process that took a while. We did not hire additional staff to manage the new software. Um, we had a full-time scheduler who, um, uh, she didn't love it, but she also wasn't super flexible and she's no longer with us. Um, and so she, she learned slowly. Um, and uh, so it really became uh, mine to work with, our director of education, our director of um, programs, and, um, and our front office staff and our financial person uh, are the ones who really championed it and, and brought it to life. Um, and now it is more fully integrated that our executive director uses it, who was our director of programs. Um, but it took a, a solid three or four months for us to get ready for it. And then once we were ready to roll it out, it probably was only four to six weeks of really getting it functional. I would say it took us a solid year before we were really good at it. Um, and that was, you know, lots of conversations and learning. And there's, Double Knot has a ton of resources and they're super helpful. Um, but it is learning a new language. Like we had to learn that their events um, in there, uh, what we might call a program, they might call an event, or what they call an event, we might call a program. So we had to kind of understand the language um, of the software and how they set it up. But um, I would say three to four months on our end, and then really getting everything loaded in was probably four to six weeks for us. Thank you. Well, the, the main takeaway from that one is if, if you have employees that you're trying to get rid of, well, we're, we're, we're here to help you. So. She just liked uh, her system. <laughs> uh, second question from Reed Taylor, uh, again for Jen, regarding camp registration. Do you have all parents and guardians logging in at the same time, sister? Uh, she's saying that their camps literally fill in, in minutes, and there have been issues with that. So. Yes. Um, I think you, you know, you already told the story. Absolutely do. Some of the, <laughs> some of the log Our, our South Manitou Island trip fills in the first two minutes of registration, as do several of our other camps. So yes, um, we do have families um, 
all doing it at the same time, which is why we ended up shutting it down twice this year when we had those issues, because it just wasn't fair that like a few people were able to slide through the system when everyone didn't have access. Um, and so, yes, it's challenging. And um, we provide some tips and tricks about like, you can sometimes, um, we'll set it up where they can log in ahead of time, but they can't actually add sessions to their cart. So they can get all their kids' birth dates and emails entered, and then they can re-enter the registration when it's the right time and, um, and add things to their cart at that time. Um, that's why we made it possible for, um, for families to bypass the health form so that they can um, come back and fill that out later when they have more time. We use lots of language letting them know that as soon as it is in their cart, it stays in their cart. They don't have to worry about losing it. Um, Double Knot does automatically clean um, carts out that haven't been checked out, but it's it's a, you know, it's not like the 12 minutes that you have at a concert um, purchasing that like you, this expires in 12 minutes, it's a few hours. And so, um, so yes, we do and, and it works and it's stressful for families and we coach them through best practices. Um, and there's some families that don't get in and that's always the case. And, and quite honestly, we're working on building capacity for camp because of that. But um, Double Knot, with the exception of 2021, um, has been able to serve all of our families uh, at the same time. Great. Uh, next question from Jason Martin. Uh, wants to know more about populating pre-existing data into Double Knot from places like Excel, Google Sheets, FileMaker, is this possible? And if so, how easy is it? Um, I can address that. That's actually part of the implementation project. Um, we have an entire implement, implementation team uh, that will work with you. We have project manager and the conversion of that type of information, you know, contact information and, and so forth is all done as part of the implementation project. Um, obviously, if you can clean up your data as best as possible, that's always great. But if not, that's fine. It can be cleaned up, um, you know, during the implementation project. So that's for contact information. Data itself, like historical data, um, we can bring that in. We traditionally bring in membership data as part of the standard implementation. Anything beyond that, like fundraising history or specific program registration history and so forth, it can be brought in, but it may not be considered standard. Um, it it kind of depends on what needs to come in and what kind of uh, shape it's in and the, the source from where it's coming. Uh, Jason had another question, also hoping to learn about how Double Knot integrates with pre-existing website on the back end. How much developer time is necessary to set all this up? There's very little time. We're a web-based system. Uh, we simply become a subdomain of, off of your website. We can use your style sheet so that it'll mimic the look and feel of your website. So if we're using your style sheet in the future, if you make a change to your website's look and feel, it'll automatically travel through the style sheet and the double knot side will change its look and feel as well. So uh, there's from a technical side, there's very little you have to do. We can work with almost any format from uh, on the website side of things. Retailers asked another question about this time about gift cards. Our gift cards handled and managed and tracked. Um, Jen, are you using gift cards? We should be, but we're not yet. <laughs> okay, no, no problem. So um, gift cards and Double Knot are designed to be digital gift card, ele electronic gift cards. Um, so basically what you're buying is a number, right? And then that number, that, di that gift, uh, digital gift card has a value to it. So when you go to use that gift card, and that gift card can be under your name, or of course, it's a gift card, so you're gonna give it to somebody. It doesn't matter who's using the gift card because it's a number that's being used. Um, and that gift card can be used for online purchases or on-site. Uh, the system understands the value of that card. So if you've got a $50 gift card and you're buying $35 worth of items, the system will simply deduct the 35 and leave 15 on the card. If you've got a $50 gift card and you're buying $75 worth of items, it will first take all the 50 from the gift card and then the system will say, okay, you still have a balance due of $25, how do you wanna pay for that? Um, and there are reports in the system to allow you to manage and track 
uh, the gift cards that are out of the field, what's been used, how much money is still out there on gift cards, and, and so forth. So that's all done through reporting. Uh, Kimberly Anderson has asked about volunteer tracking. So on the double knot side of things, um, there's, there's not too much that we do. It's really not designed to be a volunteer system. Uh, but there are some things that can be done on the Clearview CRM side. Chantal, you want to talk about that for just a sec? So we do track volunteer engagement in Clearview, but what we have done is partnered with service um, in order to do the actual front end tracking for volunteers. So um, we have obviously a link uh, with them and then Clearview acts as a repository just as it does for all the double knot details. All right. Um, so yeah, the service would be actually the front end of uh, like on the fly volunteer activities. Right, and service, if you're looking to find out more information on that service is C-E-R-V-I-S, I, yeah. I believe. Okay, yes. uh, next question, we've got uh, time for maybe one more here from uh, Carolyn. Um, can you add variable or even fixed amounts to be counted as donations instead of fees? Well, you can, as we saw in, quickly in the demo, you can, uh, if you're, purchasing something you can put in like a required donation uh, but to make it a donation instead of a fee hmm, I'm not sure on that one and I don't know if any I don't know if Jan or Chantal have an answer on that as far as like if you were um, if you were setting it up so that um, like say they're buying a, a ticket to our maple syrup day and $5 was admission and then 10 of it, you wanted it to be a donation. There's not a way in that program to split it, um, but you could do uh, an upsell that way, or it might be something that you have to manage on the back end in the financial reports. Um, one of the things that we've been in conversation with Double Knot that they're looking at is, um, being able to upsell the change. Like when you go through Panda Express and they say, do you want to add 31 cents to make it an even dollar for um, whatever uh, organization they're supporting? Um, we've talked to Double Knot about that and that's something that they're looking into. So um, so they are open to suggestions, <laughs> I guess I would say. Um, but right now, um, revenue just, you only have the ability to place revenue in one sort of cat line item category um, when you're checking things out. Um, with the exception of at the sales station, you know, if they buy something, if they buy a product or a service, they can add a donation to it. But if it's all integrated into the same event um, that they're purchasing, there's not a way to divide, you know, the $15 for that event between two categories. I don't know if that is what you were asking, if that makes sense. All right. Well, um, we still have a few questions left. Unfortunately, we've, we've come to the end of our time here. So my apologies to, to Amy and Chad and um, uh, uh, Marie and a few other folks that have asked more. Um, we can, we've got a, 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 um, a, a copy here. Alyssa will make a copy of all of the questions that were posted. And for those that we couldn't get to, uh, we'll try to have one of us get back to you and uh, give you a, a personal answer on that. So uh, we'd like to thank you all for, for attending. Um, we do encourage you to visit a special website that we've set up, doublenot.com slash anka2021. We've got a ton of resources there and a special offer that you might be interested in as well. But that special offer does have, uh, does have an expiration date. And so you would need to take a look at it quickly. Um, so I think at this point, uh, we've come to the end. Ch uh, Chad, did you want to? say anything here at the uh, at the very end here nope that <laughs> okay guess not all right well then on behalf of Jen and Chantal and our uh, backstage hero Alyssa I'd like to thank you all for joining us today and I believe that this has been recorded and will be available at some point uh, for everybody in the future so thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Enjoy thank the rest you. of the conference.